pick. Third movement. There it is. So go ahead and introduce the piece so they know what you're doing. Hi, I'm Tyler Boyd from uh, Western Michigan University. I'll be playing uh, the Nino Rota's Concerto. Uh, I guess we're playing the third movement. and grabs the listeners and attention with every note you play. So right now, it still sounds like you're very used to playing in practice rooms and small rooms, which happens when we're in college, right? Happens when we're first starting out and living in apartments. I mean, you know, we start to get trapped by the size of our environment. And now you're in a big room, and it still sounds like you're in a small room because you used to get used to play like that. So I always tell people, first of all, try and sneak into big rooms at your school as much as possible and just practice filling up the room. When we were at Juilliard, they had these huge dance studios that were like two stories high and like almost as big as this room. And it was, they were always free to like kind of walk into. They were never locked. So it was really great training just to fill up the space. So what I want you to do is think of your dynamics, not necessarily in decibel level, but in tonal color. So instead of thinking, okay, like let's say piano is a two on a scale of one to 20. I want you to think of the quality of sound and the color you want to get with piano. And it can mean it's like an eight, you know, but it's gonna have more of like just a soft presence and just color, you know, that grabs people's attention. And it sounds soft because of that. So let's just experiment with, with that, apart from the solo first, and then we can apply it. So I want you to um, pick a spot, I don't know, like the monitor way over there, you see the, yeah, see that. So let's take that spot and I want you to play a nice 
I'll start with the easy mezzo forte. But I want you to like imagine that it's sounding over there, not here, mezzo forte. So it might sound loud up here, but I bet to them it sounds like a pretty good mezzo forte. Yeah, farther, farther, farther. So it doesn't have that aggressive sound at all. It's just warm, and but over there. Yeah. yeah, that's a really easy, you don't feel like you're pushing or like working really hard, right? So another way you can think of it, even if you're in a small room and can't really aim far away, is imagine blowing right here instead of right here. So right now I feel like you know that your lips need to buzz and you need to get the air to them to make the sound. But that's kind of your focal point. If you can change that focal point to right here instead. So let's take that same mezzo forte. Instead of going to here, imagine that your lips are right here. So here's me blowing just to my lips. And here's me just thinking differently, not doing anything physically differently, but thinking right here. picture a spot across the auditorium or a large room and always aim for that. Now let's try soft. So it's a little bit more challenging. Make sure that the air is moving enough to get all the way across the room when you're playing soft. So you can see the spot. It still has to feel like can't be too stagnant with the air or won't get there. Yeah, over here more. Still farther. Softer, but still think of the distance. Mm -hmm. Now aim, look, look at the bell flare and feel that same thing. Yeah, yeah. So now let's try forte. So relax though. I don't want you to work hard. I just want you to think of, of aiming the air away over there. projection of air and the distance it's going to travel for especially when you're performing in front of people and it's really important to capture them so let's try the beginning of this again so we've got mezzo forte right in order to get in this mindset and I probably did this at your class at Western when I came but in order to get in the mindset let's um, I don't have visual things I, I use pinwheels a lot with my students those little like toy pinwheels that kids have so make them spin. You can also take, and of course we don't have one, a single piece of paper. So you're going to have a harder job. And I want you to blow on two pieces of paper, but I want you to move. So I want you to be like, I want you to do the rhythm of the third movement against that. Yeah, out here. Yeah, no, no, not the paper, but your air. Yeah. So think of your air out here. Keep the paper like about eight inches in front of you. <laughs> yeah, go closer. All right. Don't want to work too hard. Yeah, keep going. Don't worry about aperture or anything. Just let the air out. Good. Yeah. So for sake of time, now let's try it in the trombone, but just air trombone. So no sound, everything but sound. While you're doing air trombone, I still want you to think of that spot over there. Now, I don't want you to 
like react to it too much, but just go with the feeling of relaxed air over there in the corner. shaping dynamics, I just put it in there, you know, so I, I, it's part of my original plan, along with all my breath marks, so always breath marks, always phrase markings, just so I always know where I am in a phrase, and so musically, I'm like, engaged from the very beginning, and it comes from listening to recordings, and just, you know, deciding what you want to do with your own spin on the piece, too, but it's just part of, like, the performance plan going in. All right, so now we have to convince us of that. So whatever you're going to do, there's not really a right or wrong answer. Some people can do really crazy things and get away with it because they're just very convincing with their ideas. Just really convince us and do everything 20% more than you were already doing. Okay? We have to try it from the beginning. Yeah, we lost our projection though. I know, I'm asking you like so many things at once. But yeah, over there. So, remember the paper. And then exaggerate your dynamics. Yeah, and it might feel like you're playing a little bit louder at first. It just takes the body a little bit getting used to this projection. But eventually you just realize it's not working harder, really. It's just aiming your air farther away. It's not like pushing at all. So good, let's keep going. That was really good. And we have like one more minute. So let's do, let's do this louder spot right here. And I want you to just first think for a second before you start to play. How are these phrases, these little snippets of phrases going to be different from each other? They can't sound the same because we'll get bored. Yeah? So it says forte non troppo. But do something a little different. Like it doesn't have to be a huge momentous thing. But part of musical excitement and the audience listening experiences is like being surprised by the unexpected. So when that happens, it's like, ooh, that was cool, you know? That grabs them. So wherever you can do things like that, they'll hear the same dynamic here. Do something different. You know, go ahead and try. If it doesn't work, you can always change your mind and do something else the next time. Don't say stagnant musically for too long. 
All right, so we'll go on to the next person, but thank, thank you. you very much. Ben Solis, and uh, well, I'm in uh, the Army Band. I'm not the Army Band, but down at Fort Bragg with the 82nd Airborne Division Band. And uh, just really love playing British from home. Okay. I'm going to play um, just an A2, A2 number two from uh, the Pedersen Advanced A2s from British from home. So. Okay.
So we're both being brave, right? I'm playing bass trumpet on music, and then you're playing, you're singing, right? Okay. So let's try it again. We're gonna muddle through this together, and I want you to shift octaves if you have to that way. But I really want you to have a clear message in your head what the tune is. Just create 
like short smear in between notes, but always smear. Right, no time. Still smearing. Same place. Still smearing. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. 
direction to the phrase and something interesting going. Yeah, good. 
good. So wait till like the last minute to release that, you know? It's like the suspense is building. Very good, nice. And when you're playing with the orchestra, I mean, you've got a huge ensemble accompanying you if you ever do that. So you can have much more fun with louder dynamics, you know, and feel like you can just play free and out. Um, you can always start this phrase too soft. So you're giving the illusion that it's still in piano, even though you're doing this within that piano, you know. So you might get up to a mezzo forte, but then you come back down to the original intended dynamic, and that still then creates that, that dynamic atmosphere. So now let's go to the fast part at the beginning. Um, now that you're warmed up, try it again. behind everything. It's not necessarily that you're doing anything wrong. The articulation sounds fine, the double tongue sounds fine, it just needs more air pushing through it, you know. And that will help the tongue be quicker too and, and just lighter. So can you do air trombone from the beginning? So no sound, just accents and everything style. Even more energy. more supported and out there. Don't be so, I think it's, it's just harder to stay in here, you know, just push air. Love play. of that coordination. So you're going along pretty good, and then you get to eighth notes, and it's like your tongue is way faster than your slide arm all of a sudden. So can we just take those two bars right there? Deep, 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 deep. Just those two bars. Really coordinate. Yeah, yeah, nice. So now let's back up and one bar and get into that. Repetition and being on top of it and realizing that you do that at that those two bars, you know, because the rest of it's great, and then it just starts going blah 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 blah. blah. So um, something just constantly monitor, record yourself, and and just in general, as you guys are preparing for auditions of your own, every time you play an excerpt, it should just be recorded and listened to. I mean, there's nothing better than yourself being your own teacher when you're preparing these excerpts. You've got six days without your teacher to accomplish things, and that's the best way to do it. You hear, and it's like, wow, I had no idea I was doing that. Every single time, it's a revelation. So I just can't say that enough. When I was in school, I lugged around this huge tape deck where I had to go record, rewind, play, and I did it, and it was really annoying. Now there's like no excuse. I mean, it's so easy to record yourself everywhere you go. So um, thank you very much. Nice work. Thank you very much for coming.